Uh, my name is uh, Professor Tim Richardson. One of the things I thought was always missing from all the uh, business and marketing textbooks that I've been using for the years is a simple little explanation of how to incorporate a business. I mean, it's one of the fundamental things of being a business and marketing student. So what I've done is I've made this little video on YouTube in which I'm actually going to show you screen captures of specific websites you go to for the Ontario government ministries of how to incorporate a company. And I'll take you through all the steps of the different forms you need, how much it's going to cost, and your, uh, also including things like domain name registration and also searching the name. So I'm going to show this to you in the next uh, couple seconds, and I hope you find this useful. So uh, the first thing we're doing, we're just go to google.com and type in Ontario Government Small Business. That's enough words. And we're going to click here where it says starting a small business in Ontario, right? And this is the page that comes up. This is the page on the Ontario Government website that provides services about many things to do with Ontario. And this is a particular section talking about services for business. And what we're going to do is click here where it says register a business. So click there where it says register a business and you've got a number of different links. First of all, search for business names and register or renew your business. So the first thing we want to do is click on register a business, right? Now, this page comes up here, business name registration. And because we know what we want to incorporate a company, we'll go here and click where it says forms. And you click on the forms page and there's a number of different forms here and we're going to click where it says most popular forms and these are the most popular ones and here it says articles of incorporation so you click where it says articles of incorporation and this page comes up here so we're going to go right button click and there's the PDF so this is a nine page document with about uh, four or five pages of instructions that you fill out to incorporate a company and there's where you would type in the name of the company that you want to incorporate and you put in things in here like the number of directors and if it's just a, you want to incorporate by yourself you just put in one and then the names of the people and are you Canadian or not and some of the restrictions and this is where sometimes people might want to get some legal advice because in the future you may say well what if I want to grow and expand what kind of restrictions I might put in here uh, the classes and categories of shares if you want to start off and just arbitrarily say a thousand shares and then later on give a hundred shares to somebody that's how you could grow your business is by sharing it out and other things like rights and privileges if you had three or four people uh, that were starting off the company you could describe in advance here what kind of restrictions maybe uh, you've got two people and one person is a silent owner then you could describe that in here and when you're talking about medium and large size companies the lawyers will fill out pages and pages of of detail and you scroll down further uh, and you get information about any other type of provisions and then you talk about the names of the people who are incorporating and their titles and responsibilities and then everybody signs whether it's one person or two people or so on and that's basically the form right so let's go back to where it says search for business name because one of the things about incorporating a company is not just the form at which you fill out the purpose of your business and who are the names of the people that are going to operate the business but the first thing you have to think about is what is the name of the business and what the government requires in order for you to incorporate a company is to pick a name which is not confused with any other existing name so my name is Tim Richardson I could incorporate as Tim Richardson Inc but it's incumbent upon me to search and find out if there's any other famous businesses that have the word Tim in it now obviously there's Tim Hortons but if I called myself Tim Richardson Consulting Inc that's not too confusing so they would let me register that but if I wanted to register a name such as Tim Hortons Architecture Limited, they probably would decline that. So what you do here is you go through a process to actually search for existing names of companies and you pay a small fee. You can have a detailed business names report and you pay $8 and it gives you a list of the company names based upon the words that you picked. So for example, if I want to pick the word Tim, the word Richardson, and the word architect, it'll give me all the names of companies that are already incorporated with the words Tim in it, 
the word Richardson and the word architect. And I might find that there's Jim Richardson Architect. And if I wanted to incorporate a company as Tim Richardson Architect, they may turn me down. If it was Richardson Architect Construction Engineering Limited, and I simply want to be Tim Richardson Architect, they may say that that's enough of a difference that that's okay. So then you go through that process. In, and this will result in you receiving paper, which is printed out in a PDF format, listing all the names that are close to the name that you want to pick. You have to take those pieces of paper and submit that with the documents from your form for incorporation, and all that goes together in your application to have a new incorporated name. I hope that that gives you some assistance. I have a separate uh, uh, YouTube video talking about domain, re domain, domain name registration, which is also uh, useful to some people. One more thing I wanted to add in this uh, little recording is if you go back to the main page, starting from here, the, the starting a business page, uh, we first looked at the uh, section here on registering a business, and that's the screens I just showed you through. If you scroll further down on that main page, you get to section under regulations called regulations and licenses. I think the URL at the top is right here. Um, if you click on regulations and licenses, this little screen that comes up, this is worthwhile to have a look at because if you're involved in starting a small business that has anything to do with food service preparation or the movements of goods or whether or not you're going to have to charge people GST and so on, there's certain permits and licenses and regulations you have to follow. And this is the section on the Ontario Government Provincial website that you should look at to get the information that's necessary. And it starts here talking about the different types of uh, permits and licenses uh, that are required. So I strongly recommend that you have a look uh, through that section. Now again starting from scratch if you go to the main service Ontario webpage uh, we looked here for registering your business name and we also looked at some basic information. Um, further scrolling down the difference between incorporating a business and simply registering a sole proprietorship is some of the things that we talk about in the Intro to Business course. Money-wise, it costs $60 to register a business name in the province of Ontario. It costs between $8 to $26 to search a business name. Now, you might want to search a business name even though you're not going to be incorporated, even if it's a sole proprietorship, because you don't want to have two confusing different types of names. And the other thing, of course, is a master business license. The reason for that is if you wanted to open up a bank account in the name of uh, your little business that was different than your personal name, in order up to open up that bank account, you need to prove to the bank that you have registered a business, either as a sole proprietorship, partnership, or corporation. And that's the purpose for going through that series of paperwork. Now, there's a couple of differences between registering a business as a sole proprietorship and incorporating a company. So what we're going to do to make this easy for you to find is just go back to Google, uh, type in Ontario Government Incorporating a Business and simply click right here. The reason I didn't want to show you the specific URL is because sometimes government ministries change their URLs quite frequently. So if you just search with those terms, Ontario Government Incorporating a Business, you're guaranteed to find the right page. So on this page is the shortcut to the Articles of Incorporation. If you right button click, that'll open up the uh, PDF file which takes you through those pages of uh, listing the names of the directors, the responsibilities, the purposes that I had showed you previously. And there's also other things uh, such as the consent to act as a first director. If there's anybody else that you're involved with and you need to do things on behalf of the corporation, the other people that are also listed as the people in the beginning also have to give you consent. There's also some helpful information here uh, about some not-for-profit organizations and also the information about the Nuance name search. So I hope that is, uh, is useful for you.